little stuff like an extra semester or changing majors or like little stuff like that just doesn't matter in the big picture. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAD. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm excited to chat with you and hopefully answer some of your questions. What can I help you with? Um, okay, so just some background. Um, I transferred schools at the end of my sophomore year. And going into the new school, I had switched my major from health science to business. Okay. Um, just because like I had worked with my dad with his business during the pandemic, and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to like pursue that. But um, so I started uh, this fall semester. And um, when I did the timeline for when I was supposed to graduate, it comes up that I would have to take an extra semester of school to complete my degree. Okay. Um, so I kind of freaked out and I did it again. <laughs> if I stayed the same major, I still had to take an extra semester. So no matter what, even if I take it as a minor, I have to take an extra semester. So I was wondering, like, how does this look to schools, medical schools? Like, I'm taking an extra semester of school. Needing to take an extra semester? Yeah. Doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look bad? No. Why would it look bad? Because it just took me longer to... Because I, like, switched majors so late. Doesn't matter at all. Okay. So where do those extra credits go like that third semester of my senior year would all of those come together into my undergrad like senior year yep yeah they they would typically be counted as senior year credits the way that amcast does it is is typically once you hit a certain credit threshold you kind of get bounced to the next semester if there's no clear delineation in your courses or anything and so i've seen lots of people with like 20 credit or 30 credit first year, 30 credit second year, 30 credit third year, and then like 80 credit senior year because they took a bunch of credits or they're non-traditional and they went back and did undergrad stuff um, before graduating. Um, and so it all counted as senior. Once you graduate, once you have your diploma, then you are considered post uh, a post-baccalaureate student and all of those credits would go under your post-bac. But if, if you haven't graduated yet, you take an extra semester or two, or you wanted to do three minors, and so you needed lots of extra classes for that stuff, that typically will just get added on to the end of your, your senior year credits. So you would just have typically some more senior credits in there. Okay. And it doesn't look bad, like the transferring, like it doesn't look like I, because I want it to look like medicine is still my first choice, but because I switched my major from science to like business, I don't want major to does not matter at all. We need lots of business minded people in medicine too, so it's not a problem. <laughs> the The goal for medical schools is in your personal statement, can you show <laughs> that you want to be a doctor? That you have the experiences to confirm that you want to be a doctor in your academics? No matter what major you have, have you shown that you are academically capable in the courses that you've taken? And in the prereqs, assuming the school requires some sort of prereqs, not every school does, but the far majority do, did you do well in those? And those are typically the science prereqs. So um, do you have a good solid foundation there? Which typically leads to having a good foundation for a good MCAT score as well. The major that you have, needing to take an extra semester, an extra year for college doesn't matter. Switching majors from a science to a non-science major doesn't matter at all. Um, also, um, this is another question. Just um, So my sophomore year, I took um, a, lot of a lot of science classes that I kind of realized that I couldn't handle in the middle of the semester and I actually ended up getting a C minus in physics. So should I retake it? Cause I did technically yeah. it is like I failed it. So yeah. So C minus as it sounds like you understand C minus for medical for most medical schools is not considered passing for a prereq. Okay. So you'll okay. have to retake that one. Okay. Okay. Um, but don't worry about it. The C minus isn't going to hurt you. Okay. Retake the course, do better in it, and uh, and you'll be fine. Okay. 
And I could take it at like during the summer at like a community college. Does that look? You can. It's not probably the perfect ideal scenario. Uh, it doesn't. You don't want to make it look like you're taking a course at a four year university, not doing well in it, going to community college, doing well in it, taking another class at university, not doing well, going back to community college, doing well. You, you don't want a pattern of making it look like you're not doing well in one place and doing well in another. So ideally, you're taking it at, at, at a four year university. But if, if that if that's what works for your schedule and your timeline and, and everything else, then it's fine. Sounds good. What else? <laughs> um, that's kind of it. That was like my main question, but I was expecting a much longer answer <laughs> for the one that I had to take an extra semester for, but that's kind of it. And no then, longer, yeah. no longer. I, I, there, <laughs> are, there are lots of things to worry about as a pre-med student and little stuff like an extra semester or changing majors or like little stuff like that just doesn't matter in the big picture. The question that I would have for you is, what kind of clinical experience are you getting? Um, so I'm an EMT. Wonderful. So I, I do that. And okay. I also, um, I'm a phlebotomist. Also. Amazing. All right. So you're getting great clinical experience. So keep that up. What about shadowing? Um, I guess I do some shadowing when I go to like where I work, like phlebotomy, because like some days I come in just to like, talk to the doctor like okay. that I work for. Yeah. Is, um, so you could put that as shadowing on your application. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even though it's the same, same job or whatever, you can, you can split that into two, um, two activities. So that's perfectly fine. Okay. And um, just for the MCAT, um, like, should I have, I should have finished um, like all of my classes before I take the test? Not like, necessarily. Um, you can potentially study on your own a couple of, or not a couple, like ideally only one. Uh, it's usually always like a physics two or a biochemistry that students are like, I don't know if I can finish this. Uh, and so self-studying one subject is not the end of the world. But a lot will just come down to what does the rest of your schedule look like? What else do you have on your plate that may dictate how much effort and time you have to put into the MCAT? So potentially if you're going to do like a course, like a Blueprint Live Online course or something like that, where they're going to give you all of the content for that specific subject that you need, and then you just you dive into it, and then when you're taking your, your practice exams, uh, you're potentially finding where you're weaker or stronger in some of those subjects, even if you've taken those subjects before. Um, but especially the ones that you haven't taken, finding where your weaknesses are and how those specific subjects come up on the MCAT so that you can go in and study as you go through your full-length exams. There are ways to do that. Okay, thank you. You're um, welcome. That's kind of all the questions. Anything else? That's it. All right. So, so yeah. yeah. Kind of <laughs> so from a from a MCAT perspective, go sign up for a free Blueprint MCAT course or MCAT uh, account where you get um, a free full length exam, a half length diagnostic, amazing study planner tool, and other stuff as well. So that that that'll be like kind of your kickstart to get down into that MCAT path. But <laughs> hopefully that was helpful for you. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> Thank you.